Hi, Mike Mazzalongo here with BibleTalk.tv, and this is 10 Steps to the New Spiritual You, a, a small group study for mature Christians, and this is session number five, entitled Surrender. Now, we've said that our primary goal is to become more Christ-like. This is the new you we are aiming for with these sessions. This pursuit requires that we develop certain spiritual disciplines which we have been studying. So far, we have looked at one, intimacy, which is developing a closer walk with God, two, simplicity, removing and reordering those things that tend to spoil our intimacy with God, three and four, silence and solitude, which is learning to be still and listen or hear what God says once we detach from the world in order to draw near to him. Now, one of the more difficult disciplines to learn is the fifth in the series, and the one we'll be looking at in this session, the discipline of surrender. So what does surrender to God mean? Releasing our grip or hold on our rights, plans, dreams, and putting these into God's hands. This is surrender. For example, not my will, but your will be done. Not my plan, dream, rights, but your plans, visions, righteousness be done. Surrender is the most difficult discipline because it goes against our most powerful drive, which is self-interest. How then do we actually surrender to God? What method do we use to accomplish this? So number one, study Christ. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the writer says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We need to study his life, not simply to know the facts of it, but rather to imitate him. Paul gives us some practical information concerning some things required by the discipline of surrender. He writes in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. So note four things. First, do nothing from selfishness or conceit. Verse 3. Second, with humility, lift up others before self. How to do this? Listen instead of talk. That's in verse 3. Then in verse 4, he gives us the third thing. Do not only look out for self. And then finally, number four. Look out for the interests of others. That's in verse 4. And so these are the things that Jesus did as he modeled surrender for us. Again, in Philippians 2, 5 to 11, Paul writes, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So here are a couple of things that we learn from this passage about Jesus. First, he released his grip on his position. Secondly, he emptied himself of power. Third, he became not just a man, but a poor, lowly servant of a man. And fourth, he accepted a cruel, undeserved death, total surrender. And so the first step towards surrender is the study and imitation of the one who perfectly accomplished it. So we study Christ, then 
we compare ourselves to Christ. What does comparing ourselves to him mean, and how does it cultivate surrender within ourselves? We read in Hebrews 12, verse 3, For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. With this passage in mind, we remember that the next time we feel unfairly criticized or feel discouraged because of our burden or are afraid to give up something pleasant and comfortable, think of him and compare your situation to his. In other words, keep Jesus as your standard. All other human examples are driven by the instinct to survive. Only Jesus modeled perfect submission. While we and others seek to preserve our lives, he came to lay his down. When we compare our lives to his, not ours, not sports or other heroes, and imitate his life, when we do this, it gives us strength to carry on our own Christian lives even when we grow weary. And then number three, let go. Releasing your grip on things you want to possess or control frees you to be in submission to God. It is the effort to hold tightly to your life and your goods that exhausts and enslaves you. Letting these things go by submitting them to God is what frees us. Again, in John chapter 12, verse 24 and 25, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. True life, which is freedom, can only be found in submission to God. The question, therefore, is how do we let go? How is it done in practical terms? The writer of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 8 writes the following, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. And so let's have some practical ways to let go and to surrender. First, let go your possessions. In other words, acknowledge before God in prayer that all of what you have actually belongs to him. You are only a steward. Number two, let go your desire for a position. Again, in other words, release your hunger for recognition, benefits, and advantages to God. Begin to find your security, value, and identity in him only. Number three, let go your plans. Of course, we have to make plans, but be ready and patient when God changes them. Not becoming angry and discouraged when plans are changed is a clear and sincere way of demonstrating that we have let go of the control over our plans. Number four, let go your people. Enjoy your family and friends, but realize that they are only temporary. Give them and your hopes for them over to God. Transfer the responsibility for their lives and happiness over to God. The rewards of surrender are the surprises that God has in store for you when you surrender to him. The greater the struggle to surrender, the greater the surprise. All right, that's the end of our session for this time. We're going to have some discussion questions for your small group and look forward to seeing you the next time we're together. Question number one. On a scale of one, very relaxed, to ten, very controlling, where would you be positioned? What positive or negative effects has this had on your life? Question number two. What would be the equivalent of Jesus emptied himself for you? What would emptying yourself mean in your life? Question number three. How are you most or least like Christ? Question number four. Describe a person you know who is most like Christ and what trait you most admire about them. 
Question number five. What do you think Mike means when he says, the greater the struggle to surrender, the greater the surprise?